Okay, guys, good morning. We're going to talk today about uh, 4-6, part 1 and 2. I'm going to double up for uh, part 1 and 2 because luckily we already know 95% of this lesson. Because when, when Mr. Morrow went ahead and started this chapter, remember we were talking about graphs in general and relationships. I went ahead and described to you what a function was. Now, I know that we're all humans, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap everything up now with functions and formalize it all, okay? We're going to make it formal, and that way everything could really, hopefully, fall into place today, and you could really put all the pieces together. So basically, my friends, when we're talking about a function, a function is a set of ordered pairs, and any set of ordered pairs is called a relation. So a relation whether it be a function or not, is any set of ordered pairs, okay? When they tell you, oh, what is this relation? They're talking about a set of ordered pairs. Now, a function is a relation because it is a set of ordered pairs, but it is a relation where you can only have one y value for any particular x value. A function is a relation where you can have one y value for any given x value. A, a function is a relation where you can only have one y value for any given x value. And we have talked about this. One of the new things that we have for today, my friends, is this right here function notation that's new and it's going to take us about two seconds to go over this now function notation gentlemen f of x okay that's function notation this this little f parentheses x is read f of x what it means is it's telling the reader hey this is a function called f with an independent variable called x. If you have g of c, that means you have function g with independent variable c. So we're going to get into this function notation and how it works a lot more detail later, but I want to at least explain to you that when you see this f parentheses x close parentheses, it's called f of x. And it's just a fancy way to represent the y value. If they tell you f of x equals 4x four, four plus 7, that's the same as me telling you y equals 4x plus 7. Okay? f of x and y are the same thing. They're just different ways to write the same thing. f of x is the dependent variable. f of x is the output. f of x is the range. Okay? It's the same as the y. Now, back to old stuff. Let's give you some examples of relations and some examples of functions. Okay? For this first one, can anyone tell me why that's a relation? Sir? No, every y value will always have an x value. That's not what I said a function was. No, guys, 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 okay, let's... For here, right here, you have 1, 3, 2, 5, 3, 7, 1, 9. This is not a function because I have two y, different y values for the same x value. Guys, didn't I just finish saying this? So what don't we understand so I can help you? 1, 3, and 1, 9. Can I have two different y values for the same x. So that's why it's a relation only, okay? It's only a relation. It's not a function. Why is this one that I'm going to highlight in green, why is that not a function? Sir? Yes, it's only a relation. Why? You have 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, negative 5, 3, 9. 
Why is that not a function? Okay. This, why is it not a function? Okay, wow. Why is this not a function? Thank you. Guys, this, this uh, relation here is not a function because, please pay attention to the wording. I don't know what you guys were telling me right now. There are different y values for the same x. You cannot have different y values for the same x value. You cannot have different outputs for the same input. Why would this guy here that I'm covering in blue, why would this not be a function? Sir? Thank you very much, my brother. Because you have two different y values for the same x value of 3. That is why those are not functions. Now, examples of functions. 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 7, 4, 8. That's a function. Okay? That is a function, and I'll prove it to you. How do I get from 5 to 6? How do I get from 6 to 7? How do I get from 7 to 8? And then 1 to 2, plus 1, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 1, yeah. Not only is it a function, but what kind of a function is that one in particular? A linear function, good. You have no repeating x values with different y, so it's a function. Now this one, this one a lot of people, this one right here, a lot of people get confused with it. They'll say, no, that's not a function. It is. You can have different x values for the same y, but you cannot have different y's for the same x. Why is this allowed? Let's look at the graph. Here's 1, here's x, here's y. This is a straight line going through the 1 forever. Does that pass our vertical line test? Really? This does not pass the vertical line test? It only hits at one point each one. So that's why that is a function. Don't get confused with that. You cannot have different y's for the same x but you can have different x's for the same y. Last but not least, negative 1, negative 5, 0, negative 3, um, 1, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 5. Is that a function? Yes. Now you'll say, but wait, you have repeating values. Yeah, but negative 1, negative 5, negative 1, negative 5. That's the same y value for the same x, you're golden. Does that make sense? Okay. Domain and range. We have talked about domain and range already. So this is, again, another repeat, another review. Domain is all possible x values. Range is all possible y values. So I want you to find the domain and range of each of these. Well, the domain for this bad boy is going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4, because those are the possible x values. The range is going to be 3, 5, 7, and 9. Because those are the possible y values for this particular function. Over here, we'll do it in blue. My domain is all the possible x values. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. The range, all the possible y values. So that would be 4, 6, 8, and 10. That's domain, and that's range. Domain is the possible x values, which we've talked about already. And range is the possible y values, which we've talked about already. Does that make sense, boys? All right. Now, is 6543645A a function? And explain. Okay, who said no? Okay, why? Very good, son. 
this is not a function because you have two different y values for the same x value of 6. So this is no. Why? Because there are two x fat. Uh, there are two different y values for the same x. Okay? You also have the vertical line test. If I give you a graph, you could draw vertical lines. When you draw a vertical line using the vertical line test, you're trying to find out how many, <coughs> excuse me, how many spots on the graph, okay, does this vertical line touch? If it touches more than one, then that means there's two different y values for that same x. So, for example, for this, for this example, one with a circle. Let's say I put a vertical line right down here. At this x value of negative 1, 2, 3, at the x value of negative 4, don't I have a y value here and here? So is this a function? No. It does not pass the vertical line test. Does this one pass the vertical line test? Yes, it only hits the graph at one spot for any x you choose. What if I give you something like that? Will this pass? Yes, I'm only hitting one y value for any given x that I choose. Does that make sense, boys? Okay. Now, the one real new thing, which isn't really that new. What does it mean to evaluate? To plug in. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So check it out, boys. They're going to tell you, find the range, which is, remember, the output, the, X, the f of x, the y values. Find the range for the domain, and they give you a domain. Guys, this is so simple. Make a table. Your domain is the x values, and this time your output is f of x. It's the same thing as saying y. When x is 1, 1 times negative 1.5 is negative 1.5 plus 4 is 2.5. When x is 2, 2 times negative 1.5 is negative 3 plus 4 is 1. When x is 3, negative 1.5 times 3 is negative 4.5 plus 4. That's negative 0.5. When x is 4, Negative 1.5 times 4 is 6. Negative 6. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. And that's it. That, guys, what else should there be? Didn't they give you the domain, which are the x values? Didn't I plug in each one of the x values they told me to plug in? Didn't I get a y value for each value? What else do you want? That's it. Yeah, that's, it is a good thing. Thank you. Now, how about over here, using the same numbers for x? 1, 2, 3, and 4. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is negative 2. When x is 3, y is negative 5. When x is 4, y is negative 8. And now from there, would I be able to graph this? Of course. Very simply, too. Let's go ahead and graph it. We'll graph it in blue. 1, 1. 2, negative 2. 3, negative 5. 4, negative 8. Wait, what did I do wrong here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah, 5. Thank you. Thank you. I knew something was off. I was like, this is not straight. And then... Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, thank you. Got to be straight. Right? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I messed this up. One, one, two, negative two. Three, one, two, three, four, five. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, I shouldn't have been speeding through it. And that's my graph. Does that make sense, boys? You promise. Awesome. That's the lesson, my brothers.